Hello. I am former Mormon of 45 years, Han Rathas, which means he is saved or he is rescued. You know, um, a lot of people don't know this, but when you're a Mormon missionary and you bump into a Jehovah's Witness pioneer, it's like that old Clint Eastwood movie where two people look at each other with guns in the Wild West, and you kind of hear that music that kind of goes like this. And so in Argentina, when I was in Buenos Aires, I would see a Jehovah's Witness. And of course, we were both bored and the sun was usually hot or whatever. And we wanted someone to debate. And they would have this, this uh, Bible called the New World Translation of the Holy Scriptures, which we call the Green Dragon. Now, uh, Doctors, Westcott and Court, Doctors Westcott and Hort, of course, rewrote the Bible and published it in 1881. Joseph Smith rewrote the Bible and uh, in, on the Johnson Farm with Sidney Rigdon from 1831 to 1833. So Joseph Smith was, um, you know, 50 years ahead of the game of Westcott and Hort. The Mormons still use the Joseph Smith translation, or what they call the inspired version, and the Jehovah's Witnesses use this New World Translation of the, what they call the Holy Scriptures that came forth from Doctors Westcott and Hort. And if you have an NIV, ESV, NASB, and so forth, your Bibles also come from the same fountain that this Bible came from, the critical text. Okay, now I wanted to show you something. This is going to be, I think, a very interesting video. Um, but I wanted to show you something in the Jehovah's Witnesses Bible that, that's in all the post-1881 Bibles, essentially. And um, this is the thief on the cross. And um, it says, and he, the thief, went on to say, Jesus, remember me when you get into your kingdom. And uh, Jesus uh, Christ said to him, Truly, I tell you today, you will be with me in paradise. Okay, now, you'll notice that it says Jesus. What is missing? The word Lord is missing. Okay? Okay, now, the Apostle Paul was asked a question. What must I do to be saved? And he answered it in, uh, in Romans uh, 10.9. So we're going to get there. But I'm going to show you a Jehovah's Witness who on the pulpit stood up and, and tried to beat around the bush and wake up Jehovah's Witnesses in the, in, in, in the congregation about what it really takes to be saved. And uh, I find it interesting that this particular person, ironically, became a witness for Jehovah on the pulpit, and he was canceled. He became a true Jehovah's Witness, a witness for Jehovah, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jesus Christ, before Abraham was, I am. He tried to tell them that the Lord, which has been deleted from many places in the New World Translation of the, what they call the Holy Scriptures, that the Lord is Jesus Christ. He's the authority, not the rulers of the Jehovah's Witnesses, not the rulers of the Mormons, not the Pope. Okay, let's get going. Hello, today is April 5th, Friday. It's about 4.30 p.m. And I just had to share something with you. I just saw something on the internet that just made my heart skip. It was from a uh, former Jehovah's Witness lady. Now, just so you know, I have always felt that the hand is uh, Roman Catholicism and the fingers are Mormonism, Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, belief system, Seventh-day Adventists, Christadelphians, you know, you name it, uh, uh, Calvinists. But the hand is the Catholic uh, hand and everything else is just fingers. And, um, you know, if you look at the structure of these other churches, usually they have a one-man leader like a pope or in Mormonism, the president of the church, even though there are no presidents in the Book of Mormon or the Bible. And then they have a, a sacerdotal layer or a priesthood layer under that. Then they have people you confess to, priests or Mormons would call them bishops and so forth. And uh, I thought it was really funny with this video that I saw. I'm going to show it to you in just a second. But before I do, I want to show you two scriptures. 
So here I am at Romans chapter 10, verse 9. And um, the um, uh, Philippian jailer says, what must I do to be saved? And uh, look at what it says here in the King James Bible. Paul says, if that if thou shalt confess with the mouth, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth that Lord Jesus, not just Jesus, you got to confess that he's the Lord, the Savior, the anointed one. Okay, let me take that again. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt uh, be saved. Okay, now even in the NIV, it says, if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Okay, so substantially the same. Now let's go to Luke chapter 23, verse 42. The King James Bible says, you know, this is when the thief on the cross said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. This is what the Lord said. And, and, um, and um, the thief said unto Jesus. Now notice the first thing that the thief says to Jesus uh, Christ. He says, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Notice over here, they delete the word Lord. In the NIV, it says, then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Now, remember, I showed you before that what gives you salvation is to confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. And here in the NIV, the thief on the cross doesn't say Lord. So you see how problem, problematic that is. Now, why would you delete the word Lord? Obviously, if you were dying and you wanted someone to save you, you probably wouldn't just call them by their first name if you knew that this person was, was what he said he was, the king of the world. Uh, anyway, so I saw this clip uh, from, a, I think she's a former Jehovah's Witness woman, and uh, there was an elder in their church, or somebody apparently, that stood up and was giving a talk. And then at the very end, the person seems to give the gospel of grace, and they turn off his mic, and they escort him from the pulpit. They ask him to leave the pulpit. Now, the gospel is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. It says, if you trust three things, you'll have eternal life, that Jesus Christ died for your sins according to the scriptures, that his shed blood paid for your sins, two, that he was buried, and three, that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. I thought that all 680 of my subscribers should know about this thing that a certain group tried to keep silent. They tried to cancel a person, so I thought I would give it more attention. God bless you. Hi, friends. One of my viewers by the name of Karen Brooks from the UK had sent me this video on my Facebook page and I absolutely could not believe what I was seeing and I wanted to share it with you. You see, the Jehovah's Witness organization, they publish books and they require their followers to read these books because the books contain their doctrine. And obviously they need these books and magazines because their doctrine is not found in the Holy Bible. They ignore 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 which states that all scripture is inspired by God and profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, for instruction in righteousness. So in other words, the Bible is all we need. Anything that is contained in the Bible that contradicts what the Jehovah's Witness organization teaches is not allowed. So, given this, enjoy the video of this elder who is my hero. Now, we don't like to judge each other's spirituality. We shouldn't do that. We know only Jehovah can read hearts. So we probably know who the king is. We probably don't have a single person in here who would fail that question on a test. We know Jesus Christ is the king. But let's just take it a little bit further and go to Galatians chapter 1 and verse 8. Because... We can get caught up in details just as easily as it can happen in Christendom. We've got a big Bible here. There's a lot of things 
that we can get into. And Paul gives us a warning here. I know, it's slower. I realize that paper is slow, gives you time to think. Galatians 1.8, Paul gives this warning. And he says, you know, there's a lot of talk, a lot of excitement going on. But in verse 8, he says, however, even if we are an angel out of heaven, were to declare to you as good news something beyond the good news that we declared to you, let him be accursed. Well, let's give that a tiny bit of thought. We can hear something from someone we respect in the organization. We can hear something from the person who taught us the Bible. We can hear something from an elder. I could say something right now that might not be the right thing. And that doesn't stop at the level of elder. That can go all the way up. And if we know anything about the theocratic history of this organization, we know that that can happen all the way up. So how do we keep this point of how to submit to God's rulership now with all of the things that could be said, all of the speculations, all of the hard lines, all of, all of the things that could be said? Well, Paul said, stick to the basics. What was the good news that he had declared to him, to them in the past? It was very simple. There is a king, it's Jesus Christ, and the law is over. <coughs> and you can approach God freely. The law is over? The law is over? Think of what that does to Mormonism. Mormonism has the third article of faith that says, we believe that through the atonement of Jesus Christ, all mankind may be saved by obedience to the law. Well, the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Catholics and the Seventh-day Adventists are all saying the same thing. So their leadership gets to give you the law. And it's always going to be give them money for life, attend their meetings for life, honor and sustain their leaders. When they say jump, you say how high for life and give them service. And he's challenging this. He's challenging this. He's going to Galatians chapter 1, verses 8 through 9, which in the King James Bible, it says, even if I, the Apostle Paul, even if we, okay, or an angel from heaven, Moroni, okay, or any other angel that has appeared to anybody else comes and gives you any other message other than the gospel is Jesus Christ died for your sins according to the scriptures. He was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And if you'll trust that his shed blood paid for your sins, you will have eternal life. If anybody, Paul says, including me or an angel from heaven, gives you any other message, let them be accursed. What is he doing here? He is saying, let the leaders of the Jehovah's Witness organization be accursed. Well, maybe your typical person in the pew didn't catch that. But you're going to notice his microphone's going to be turned off. And someone's going to come up on the uh, platform and whisper something in his ear. And, and you can bet it's something like this. Sir, you need to get off the platform now or we will escort you off. Or... If you don't go voluntarily, we will force you off or the police will come here. It will be ugly. But one way or another, you will be silenced and you will be silenced now. They wanted to cancel him. Let's look at the rest. And there was a lot written about it. Now, we have new things. There's, Of course, we're in a different era. There are new details. But the fundamental idea is to respect the king. So we have to just make sure we're doing it. And one more scripture on that will be Romans 10.10. 10. We know this verse really, really well, I think. We especially know verse 13, but in 10, or verse 9, excuse me, he says, if you publicly declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and exercise faith in your heart that God raised him up from the dead, notice these are very basic, basic things. But if we talk about that and we don't hide that, then we can make a public declaration for salvation. And in verse 13, we can be saved. So, by keeping it simple, and by sticking to the scriptures as often as we possibly can, we'll be in a pretty good position 
to make sure that we're letting God's rulership be over us. Now, the more interesting concept on this is to figure out what we should do. So how did you like that? Romans 10, 9, that if you shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. That was all it took for those elders to shut him down. Isn't that sad? The scripture that tells them the path to salvation. Listen, friends, God is not a God of confusion. 1 Corinthians 14, 33 says, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. You start reading the publications of the Watchtower organization. What is it? You go on this path of confusion all around different doctrines that change, different predictions that changed. Back to the basics. Get back to the basics, the Holy Bible. Thanks so much for watching, friends, and I hope you have a great day. Just in closing, when I went back to my high school reunion, the 40th reunion, which was in uh, Denver, Colorado, I had a few hours uh, available to me, so I went out to just preach, and I saw some Jehovah's Witnesses. And they were very happy that they met somebody who was calm and polite, who could talk about the Bible. And um, I said to him, I said, you know, I'm a former Mormon and I know how you feel. I said, you're terrified to contradict anything that your leaders teach because you're afraid your wife or somebody around you would, dis would, would shun you. And he was with his wife. And they both said, oh, that's not true. I said, okay, I'm going to ask, ask each one of you, give me one doctrine, one doctrine that you've got questions about that you think might not be right that uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses preach. Give me one. They couldn't. I said, so, so all of your doctrines just happen to be absolutely perfect. You know, you agree with them all. And they said, yes. I said, well, why have you written um, and why have you deleted so many verses from the King James Bible? And so I said, you know, you guys used to believe in the King James Bible. Then in the 1950s, you replaced it with the critical text. He did not know what the critical text was. Neither was she. So I told them about Westcott and Hort. I showed them the deletions. And he says, well, the Jehovah's Witnesses, this is what he said. The Jehovah's Witnesses are like 3M. They take a product and they make it better. I said, that isn't what you were teaching before the 1950s. You were teaching that the King James Bible was infallible. Anyway, I'm glad that she quoted um, Romans chapter 10, verse 9. Remember, the gospel is in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, for, uh, excuse me, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. And, and this is what he was alluding to when he, when, when he was referring to Galatians 1, 8 through 9. He was referring to Jesus Christ on that cross. Above him said in three languages, you know, this is the king of Israel, Okay the king of the Jews, and uh, he was the king, and he was talking about how the gospel is recognizing one authority, the king, not the Jehovah's Witness authority, not the Mormon authority, not the Catholic authority, no, 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 not the Seventh-day Adventist authority or any other authority, but the holy scriptures. Anyway, I thought the man showed a lot of courage, and I liked, uh, liked the video. God bless.